This is the new transcribed Abbott and Costello show with a new singing discovery, Susan Miller and Maddie Malnick Orchestra, and yours truly, Michael Roy. So hold on to your chairs, folks, for here they are, Bud Abbott and Lou Costello. <laughs> Costello. I hear Uncle Mike is raising ducks now on his ranch. Oh, yes, he's got a lot of them. Uh, what chance have I got of having a duck egg? Not much, unless you're a duck. I... <laughs> well, forget about your relatives. Did you play golf with Susan Miller yesterday? Oh, yes. And she knows how to use a mashie and a putter. Well, that's good. How does she use the wood? I don't know. We just played golf. I was... <laughs> hey, what's the matter with your foot? I hit my big toe with a mid-iron. <laughs> well, what are you doing? Midday, too. <laughs> what are you doing for it? Limping. Limp. <laughs> and look at your face. How did you get it so dirty? It's covered with grease. All I did was follow the instructions when I changed the oil in Susan's car. Well, how did you get your face so smeared? Well, it says when changing oil, old oil in your car, be sure and let it drain in your pan. <laughs> if I was Susan Miller, I wouldn't be seen with you. You are the biggest idiot I ever met. You're just saying that because you don't get around much. <laughs> and personally, I don't care what you think of it. Susan loves me. She's my Abba, Abba girl. Abba, Abba. Yes, that's Hubba Hubba spelled backwards. I... <laughs> Susan's got it coming and going. Now, wait, Costello. Relax and listen a minute. My friend here has something interesting to say. I want to pass along an opinion of lubrication experts. Among these authorities, the consensus is that 80% of all engine failure is the result of improper or insufficient lubrication. Yes, four times out of five when she lets go, faulty lubrication is the villain. Because our PDQ dealers understand this, and because they know how much a proper lube job can save you by preventing needless wear and breakdown... PDQ dealers take special pride in their PDQ factory method lubrication. This system duplicates exactly the recommendation of the engineers who designed and built your car. Your car is much too valuable a piece of machinery for careless experimentation. So you'd best drop in and have your PDQ dealer do that lubrication job. He knows what he's doing. He knows how important it is. And he uses the PDQ system, the type, weight, and amount of lubricant specified by the men who built your car. And now, Abbott and Costello. Melnick and his orchestra present the Smiling Undertaker's theme song, Digga Digga Doo. Say Jack Robinson. Here I am. Did anybody say it? Never mind. 
What's the idea of running out in the middle of the show and taking a driver's test? Well, you have to have it. You've got to watch these California traffic laws. Last week, I got arrested for walking in my sleep. How could they arrest you for walking in your sleep? I don't wear any pajamas. <laughs> Never mind. Uh, do you dream while you're sleeping? Uh, when you're walking in your sleep, Lou? Oh, yes. Last night, I dreamed I was walking through a park with Hedy Lamar. We sat down on a bench. I put my arms around her. She put her arms around me. I lifted her face to mine and kissed her. And then? Then I looked into her lovely eyes and said, Hedy, what about going steady? And what did she say? She said, suit yourself, big boy. It's your dream. <laughs> Gentlemen, I'm the star salesman for Henry Wallace's new book, 60 Million Jobs. Well, what can I do for you? Could you tell me where I could find employment? <laughs> That's not a step, you folks. His middle initial is P. What does the P stand for? Prescription. First time his old man saw him, he took a powder. <laughs> You're just jealous, Jim Costello, because he has talent. Come out here, Norman. What do you want, Uncle Bud? I want to show Costello how talented you are. Recite that poem you wrote last night by yourself. Okay, Uncle Bud, go ahead. Oh, poem. This is for the people who like seafood. <clears throat> January is a month with an R in it, and so are the months that follow it. If you've been holding an oyster in your mouth all winter, now is the time to swallow it. <laughs> ah, I'm proud of that boy, Costello. He's going places. And as soon as I can find a new straight man, you're going with him. <laughs> Never mind that. Now, how about paying me back the uh, fourteen dollars you owe me? I can account for every cent of it. Here, I'll figure it out on this blackboard. Now let me see. I spent eight dollars, and that leaves six. Now eight goes into six. Eight goes into six. Wait a minute. Eight won't go into six. There's no use of forcing it. <laughs> Suppose we start over and carry two. To carry two? Yes. We'll split the work. You carry one, and I'll carry one. Now my one equals x, and your one equals o. Now I put down an x, then an o, then an x. Then an O, then another X, then a no. Now, wait a minute. What are you doing? Hey, how do you like that? I just beat myself playing tic-tac-toe. <laughs> Hello, boy. Well, it's Susan Miller. Oh, hello, Susan. You know, I've been trying to get you on a phone. I don't think you tried to get me at all. In fact, I've been telephoning your house all week. Monday night, I called your house, and somebody said you were taking a bath. Monday night? Yes. Brother, did you have the wrong number? <laughs> don't pay any attention to Costello, Susan. Uh, why don't you and I step out tonight? We'll go to some little quiet spot. You'll find that I'm very romantic with candlelight and a glass of wine. You wouldn't be romantic with a flashlight and a barrel of beer. <laughs> come on out with me, Susan, if you really want to live. I'll kiss you until the cows come home. Uh, with you around, Costello, it's going to be hard to tell when the cows arrive. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that was a good one, bud. I wonder whatever happened to Pinky Lee. Ah, <laughs> yeah, but I'm supposed to get the laughs. That's hitting below the belt. Well, Costello, that's where most of you is. Susan, <laughs> <laughs> really sharp tonight. Go on, Abbott. Go ahead. You and, you and Susan tell the funny stuff. I'll set fire to these old rubber boots. Costello, won't that smell up the studio? Yes, but nobody will notice it while you two are on. <laughs> Remember, Costello, I'm, a, I'm the guy that makes you funny. I can tell jokes better than you. Atta boy, bud. Go ahead and show it. All right, Costello. I'll say to you, I've got a goat at uh, my home that hasn't any nose. And you say, how does he smell? And I tell the funny answer. Now, come on. Okay. Put the okay and That's all you had to think of was okay. Okay, go ahead. Uh, hello, Costello. I've got a goat over at my house. He hasn't any nose. Is that so? I... <laughs> That's so you're supposed to say to me, how does the goat smell? I'll try it again. Costello, I've got a goat at my house, and he hasn't any nose. Well, Costello, ask him how he smells. I don't have to. I've been to his house. Right. <laughs> Costello, why don't you give him a chance? Now, go ahead. Give him a straight line. He knows all the answers. All right. Abbott, what's the difference between... Between what? See that? He's stuck already. <laughs> Simple little thing like, what's the difference between? Ah, <laughs> oh, so you're a wise guy, Costello. 
I'll bet you ten dollars you're not here. You got a bet? Put up the money. All right. Now you're not in Cleveland, are you? No, but I got an aunt that lives here. Y- you're not in Chicago, are you? No. Well, if you're not in Cleveland and you're not in Chicago, then you must be someplace else. That's right. Well, if you're someplace else, you can't be here. <laughs> I win the ten dollars. Thank you. <laughs> Hey, that's a good one. That's pretty good. Um, Susan. Huh? Does Abbott know anything about this? No. Mm-hmm. Here's where I get my $10 back and 10 more besides. Hey, Abbott, uh, come on over here a minute. What do you want, Lou? Abbott, I'll bet you $20 I'm not here. <laughs> I'm not here. I'm, right, I'm looking right at you. <laughs> Go hey. ahead. Here's the 20 All right. There you are. Now, watch this. Abbott, I'm not in Cleveland, am I? No. I'm not in Chicago, am I? No. Well, if I'm not in Cleveland and I'm not in Chicago, then I must be someplace else. That's right. Right? Right. Well, if I'm someplace else, then I can't be here. Well, that's right. Right? Thank you. I'll take you $20. Just a minute. Just a minute. <laughs> oh, hold on there. You just said you were someplace else. Yeah, that's right. And you weren't here, didn't you? Yes, and you're supposed to give me the $20. How can I give you the $20 if you're not here? <laughs> Well, uh, how do I get the money? Tell me where you are and I'll mail it to you. <laughs> you know, Susan, you got me into this. Make Abbott give me back my $20. All right. I'll make him give it back on one condition. You give me a riddle that I can't answer. Okay. What is it that has eight legs? It's 12 feet long, wears glasses, flies backwards, carries a bottle of ketchup in one hand, and carries a baseball bat in the left hand, and bats 376. What is it? Well, I'm stuck. Abbott, give him back the twenty dollars. All right, here's the money, Costello. Now, what's the answer? Answer? I had a tough enough time making up the riddle. <laughs> that was one of my father's jokes. <laughs> what, what are you? One of your mothers? <laughs> <laughs> That's it, Abbott. <laughs> I'm through with that, Susan Miller. I'm through with all girls. Telegram for Lou Costello. Telegram for Lou Costello. I'm Lou Costello. You're Lou Costello? Yes. The famous movie actor? That's me. The great comedian that's on the air every Wednesday night? That's me. Well, what are they raving about? <laughs> give me the telegram. Mr. Costello, would you give me your autograph? I should the same guy I've been giving my autographs all year. You've got five of my autographs now. Yeah, and when I get sick of yours, I can trade them for one of Trigger's footprints. <laughs> well, here's one of my footprints. Never mind him. Who's the telegram from? Hey, look at this. It's from that famous Hollywood columnist, Erskine Johnson. Get a load of this. Dear Lou, I have chosen you from all my dearest friends to help me dig up some dirt. I will be over and see you this evening. Hey, yeah, but I better get busy. This is my opportunity. I'll be famous as a newspaper man. What are you talking about? Erskine Johnson wants me to help him dig up some dirt, and he's coming over here tonight. That doesn't give me much time. Gee, think of it, Abbott. We're going to have Erskine, the famous columnist, right here in the studio. Hey, here I am, comrade. Hello, Flickers. Let's take the United States and set it up into little bitty pieces. A piece for you, a piece for me, a piece for you, and you, and you. Wait a minute, wait a minute. You're not Erskine Johnson, the columnist. Columnist? I thought you said communist. Abbott, get that guy out of here. back with the nonsense and the flick of an eyelash, folks, after a few comments on this subject. Ladies and gentlemen, we at this very moment are face to face with February, one free day in 28th, for this is leap year. And by special arrangement with the calendar makers, PDQ is happy to announce that this year you get not an extra weekday, not an extra workday, move over, Lou, I must stand closer to the mic, but an extra Sunday, an extra day of rest and recreation. You will not again have an extra Sunday on your February calendar until that dim and distant year of 1976. In observance of this event, PDQ invites you to drive in to the PDQ station of your own choice and buy a tank full of PDQ gasoline to profit by PDQ's sensational offer of extra mileage in each and every gallon. Thrilled to the well-documented proof in highway, road, and hill test. Stand back, man. I've got to wave my arms. That for miraculous mileage-stretching economy, for ping-proof, power pack performance, Exceedingly acceptable acceleration, there is no gas, not one, like PDQ. Now, the Abbott and PDQ Costello Show. Here's the thing.
singing star of the Abbott and Costello show, Susan Miller, singing exactly like you. And sometimes even better. <laughs> happy now. I'm a real newspaper man. I'm going to help Erskine Johnson dig up the dirt. Costello, Erskine Johnson's column is, is all about Hollywood. Now, to help him, you'll have to interview people. Get around them. And now, uh, how would you get around Van Johnson? By flattery. Good. Now, how would you get around uh, Jimmy Stewart? By sincerity. That's fine. And how would you get around uh, Sidney Greenstreet? By bus. By... <laughs> Costello, you, you've got to have inside information if you're going to be of any help to Erskine Johnson. Oh, I got all the inside stuff, Abbott. For instance, I happen to know that the Chicago Fire was started by a horse. Now, that's ridiculous. Everyone knows the Chicago Fire was started by a cow. That's what you think. This horse had friends on the paper, and they kept his name out of it. <laughs> Douglas, you'll have to get a lot of... You'll have to go to a lot of parties and, and keep track of who's there, Lou. I went to a party last night. There was one guy there who tried to kiss all the girls. He tried to kiss every girl in the place at 2 o'clock in the morning. They finally threw him out. Uh, was the party better after that? I don't know. I couldn't get back in. <laughs> that was one good thing about being a cardiac. When you go to a nightclub, you can eat on the cuff. Yes. And that's... Uh, what did you say I could eat? On the cuff. You eat on the cuff. Why can't I eat on the table like anybody else? <laughs> you can eat on the table. But uh, everything you eat is on the cuff. Just a second. Suppose I have fried eggs, baked beans, succotash, and a piece of apple pie. Does all that stuff go on the cuff? Well, certainly. What a slob I turned out to be. <laughs> there I sit, dragging my sleeves through the mashed potatoes. Uh -huh. <laughs> Castella, eating on the cuff is just a part of a columnist's scrape. How do you like that? Now he's splashing gravy on my cuff. <laughs> Castella, when a columnist goes in the nightclub, he eats on the cuff. That's gravy. He doesn't have to pay for it. Well, if all he has is cuffs and gravy, he shouldn't pay for it. <laughs> Before they invite you to eat off the cuff, they will probably ask you to have a drink on the house. Well, that's different. I mean, after all... Uh, what did you say again? I said they'll ask you to have a drink on the house. Yeah, but if I got to climb up on a house to get a drink, the heck with it. <laughs> when I say you eat on the cuff, the cuff you eat on is not like the cuff you have on your cuff. And when you drink on the house, you don't really drink on the house. The house gives you the drink, so that makes it a drink on the house. Oh, you mean when I eat on a cuff? The cuff I eat on is not like the cuff I have on my cuff. So when I drink on the house, I really don't drink on the house. The house gives me a drink, so that makes the drink on the house. Now you get it. If I got it, I caught it from you. <laughs> now you, you'd 
better get out and scare up some news. Erskine Johnson is coming right over here tonight, and he said in his wire he wanted you to dig up some dirt. On my first column, I'm going to get Johnson to put in a big picture of Jane Russell. Well, do you think that will help Erskine's uh, circulation? No, but it should do a lot of good for mine. <laughs> have an ex exclusive item. Now, I've got a, a tip that the famous screen couple, Ronald uh, Flashback and his wife, uh, Millicent, are separated. Come on. Let's go over to their house. Come on. <laughs> My, they have a lovely house here, Costello. Look at the gorgeous flowers. I'd say they were lilies. They look more like Polygornian geraniums. Polygornian geraniums? How do you spell that? They're lilies. Uh, <laughs> Go ahead and ring the bell. Now I know what happened to that Lucky Strike commercial. <laughs> oh, good evening, gentlemen. Oh, uh, good evening, Mrs. Flashback. I'm Bud Abbott, and this is Lou Costello. He works for Erston Johnson, and we're here to interview you and your husband. How nice. Won't you come in? Thank you. Lovely face you have here. We noticed the lilies coming up the front walk. I think Lily's coming up the front walk again. I told them to use the back door. <laughs> Mrs. Flashback, let's get on with the interview. Now, where did you first meet your husband? I met him at a bus. He was a perfect gentleman. The bus was crowded, and he got up and gave me a seat. Then the bus crashed. What happened? He was the bus driver. <laughs> you mean the great movie star Ronald Flashback was a bus driver? Oh, yes. It hasn't been easy for us. Before Ronald got his big break in the movies, I had to work as a waitress in the drive-in. It was terrible. In five years, I didn't wait on a single car. Why? <laughs> that was before automobiles were invented. <laughs> I know how it is, Mrs. Flashback. When my Uncle Mike and Aunt May came out here, things were so tough, he had to hock his watch. Then there was nothing left to hock. He hocked my Aunt May. Yes? For three years, he worked to save his money. He went back to that hock shop. There was my Aunt May sitting in the window. He went into that hock shop. And he took out Aunt May? No, he took out his watch. This <laughs> is flashback. Costello's interested in the rumor that you and Ronald are going to separate. I, uh, I heard you slapped his face in a nightclub. Oh, gossip, gossip, gossip. Nothing but Hollywood gossip. Nothing could be further from the truth. Then you didn't slap his face in a nightclub. Of course not. I hit him on the head with a champagne bottle. <laughs> you see, Abbott, just a family squabble. Aunt May often wallops Uncle Mike, but they always patch it up. Yeah, with hugs and kisses, is it? No, with band-aids and meteor combs. <laughs> oh, here comes Ronald now. Now, you watch us, Costello, and you see how wrong that rumor was. Ronald! Love boat! Green boat! Angel boat! Honey boat! Steamboat! Oh, 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 oh. Why, Costello? Oh, my darling, my sweet darling, without you, I'm lost. I need you. Well, without you, I'm lost. We need each other. I'm lost without you. I'm lost without you. Oh, go ahead, go ahead, Dustin. I'm lost, too. I can't find my place. I... <laughs> right, here, here it is. What these two need is a road map. I should have stayed lost. And I love you, and I'll put that on the record. Not if Petrilla hears you, you won't. <laughs> Mrs. Flashback, I'm convinced that you are, you two are not separating. Preposterous. My wife is the only woman in the world that means anything to me. Then uh, that blonde you are holding hands with at Cyril's means nothing? Nothing. So you were out with the blonde, and he told me you were at the studio looking over some lines. He was looking over some lines, all right, but they weren't at the studio. <laughs> Why, you no good two-timing heel out. Darling, I'll... darling, put down that vase. It's worth $5,000. I'll take 10 cents worth. <laughs> you rat, to think I've been married to you all these years. Please, Millicent, this fat, knob-headed newspaper nitwit is a liar. I wasn't with a blonde, I swear to it. Would you take him out? Certainly. If I was out with a blonde, may this building fall down and hit me on the head. Costello, we sure got an exclusive sto divorce story for Erskine Johnson's cousin. Hey, Ed, it's Erskine Johnson. <laughs> Hello, boys. Did you get 
Hey, did you get my wire, Costello? I'll say. And I got stuff for you, Ocean. Hey, uh, did you know that Universal International is making a picture about the beautiful, sunshiny California weather? Really? Where are they shooting it? In Phoenix, Arizona. Costello. <laughs> Hello, Lamar. Hello, Lamar. But look, boys, I came here... Ocean, to... last night I was out with Eddie Lamar, and I whispered in her ear. And do you know what she said to me? No. How did you guess? <laughs> look, Costello, I came here to ask... Oh, Ocean, Ocean, Costello's just thrilled to death to be helping you. Could you give him some pointers on being a columnist? Well, it takes a lot of perseverance. For example, you want to interview Olivia de Havilland. You've got to park yourself on her doorstep. And then the only way she can get in is to walk over you. And that'll make you a columnist. That would make me a doormat. <laughs> Say, Erskine, did you see our new picture, the new Shanghai? Sure, I saw it at a speech preview in Azusa, and it was a howling success. It was? Sure, everybody was howling for their money back. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> That's a good one. Erskine, when do I start working on your column? You working on my column? What What are you talking about? Didn't you send me a telegram telling me that you wanted me to help you dig up some dirt? Oh, sure, Lou. You see, I'm building a swimming pool in my backyard, and I thought if you weren't doing anything Saturday, you might come over and help me dig up some dirt. <laughs> me? Me? You expect me to dig dirt in your backyard? You want me to be a common shoveler? Well, I thought... Erskine. Erskine Johnson. I leave you with two words. What two words? Jimmy Fiddler. Oh, no. <laughs> Don't go away, folks. Our stars will be back. But first, they'd like you to listen to this. A repair bill on your car always comes as something of a shock. And so very, very often, motor trouble is an expense and a nuisance that could have been headed off. Authorities say that about four out of five cases of engine failure are due to neglected or improper lubrication. Knowing this, you'll want to have your car regularly checked, regularly cared for by a man who is an expert in his own right, a man who knows and uses the finest oils and lubricants, a man who uses the factory maintenance recommendations for your particular car. That man is your neighborhood independent PDQ dealer. He expects to stay there and build his business by taking the finest care of your car. Many thousands of motorists depend on their neighborhood PDQ dealer for sound advice on all motoring problems. For money-saving, regular PDQ service that gives you more miles for every dime you spend. More satisfaction every mile you drive. Better get acquainted with your neighborhood PDQ dealer. You'll enjoy doing business with him. And now, Abbott and Costello. And now here are Abbott and Costello with the final word. Well, Costello, I'm convinced you'll never be a newspaper man. Well, what do I care? I'm, I'm, I'll stick to acting. I'm a great lover. I kiss better than anybody in the movies. What makes you think you kiss so good? All I got to do is walk down the street and all the girls say, there goes Costello. What a kisser. Oh, good night. Good night. Good night, everybody in Paris, New Jersey. Wednesday night at this time for another great Abbott and Costello show, produced and transcribed in Hollywood by Charles Vanda and featuring Susan Miller and Matty Malnick's orchestra. This is Michael Roy saying goodbye until this same time next Wednesday. This is ABC, the American Broadcasting Company. It's 8.30 at KECA Los Angeles.